guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you're having an awesome day. Thank you so much for stopping by. Now, let's do some fantastic paper crafting. Stay tuned. So when is a box not a box? Well, the answer to that riddle is when it's one that has a dual purpose. Yes, this is a box that you can fill and gift, but even more than that, once the gift is taken out, you have a gift within a gift. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. But before I do, I want to thank everyone who's here with me watching this video. I really do appreciate it. I think there was some confusion when I launched my membership club that you would not be able to receive my complimentary videos six days a week. And that isn't the case. I will still be on making videos for anyone who wants to watch them. And the membership club is an extra step to the channel. So you don't have to be a participant in the membership club to watch my complimentary uploads that I put out five to six times a week. Those are out there and you can watch them anytime that you want without being a member. But if you are interested in becoming a member in this fantastic membership program that I've launched, um, hit the join button if you see it and you can check out everything that I'm offering. Or if you need for me to send you a link to be able to join, just follow the instructions in the description box. So back to this dual purpose box. I am going to open this up so that you guys can see, yes, this is a box that you can fill with all types of goodies because we have a lid and a base. But as you can also see, there is something more to this box. And that's because the top and the bottom are both removable. And when you remove them, your box opens to become this awesome scrapbook frame that you can take and sit on your mantle. You can sit it on your desk. This is such a great way to gift because you've already placed a gift in the box. Then when the gift has been removed from the box, the box becomes the gift. Now we've got tags that you can write on or tuck little pictures in. You've got two pockets where you can tuck all types of goodies. And then you have two mats here in the center where you can place photographs. And I do love this. The back side, this is the outside of our box. How cute is that? This is the inside of our box and it's very sturdy because we're using the poster board and we're mounting mats on top of mats. So that adds to the sturdiness of it. But what I love is the fact that the gift box becomes the gift. I just think that's fabulous. So I am just going to take my little project and turn it back into a box. So all we do is tuck it inside of our lids, put our lids on, and we have our sweet gift box that is also a gift. Guys, how cool is that really? So I'm going to take this and set it to the side and we're gonna make it. So here is everything that we're going to be using on this project. There are a lot of small pieces, so I am not going to go over everything right now. I will go over it as we get to that part of the project. So here is how our project is going to begin. It's actually going to begin with the poster board. So I'm going to be starting with an 11 by 14 inch piece and I am going to cut that down to a five and a half by 14 inch piece. So if you don't have poster board, you just need to join two pieces together so that your finished measurement is five and a half by 14. And then I am going to be using this sticker sheet, Winter Market, and I'm holding it up so you guys can get the SKU in case you want to look for this. Okay, so let's get started on scoring and cutting the body of our box. 
And because my poster board is longer than my scoreboard, I am going to actually score this so that I can end up with the base for two boxes. So the first score that we're going to make is going to be at one, and we have it in on the 14 inch side. So the first score is at one, the second score is at four and a quarter, the third score is at seven and a half, and our final score is at 10 and three quarters. So your scores are one, four and a quarter, seven and a half, and 10 and three quarters on the 14 inch side. Then all I'm going to do is take this and fold it so that I can then put it in my trimmer and trim this down to five and a half. And so now we have the base for two boxes if we wanted to make two. So I am going to take this one and we are going to fold and burnish all of our scores. And then once we have our scores folded and burnished, we are going to bring in our cover mats. And these mats that I'm starting with, I will have eight pieces that measure three by five and a quarter. So I am just going to put these down using my handy dandy little tape runner here. So all I'm going to do is run some tape along the back and place one of these inside of my score marks for each panel front and back. And so we basically will have triple reinforcement on this project. So all I'm doing is taking my mats that measure three by five and a quarter and I'm putting them down trying to get them even at the top and the bottom. And I'll take this one. We're going to match it just like that. And then we'll take this one and place it down. I don't know about you guys, but there is just something about the sound of a tape runner that I absolutely love. I don't know if that makes me weird or not, but I love it. So we have those done. We're going to flip it and do the same thing on this side. And guys, if you decide to make this project, please post pictures on Instagram using the hashtag Posh Paper Lady Inspired because I would love to see your take. So I'm going to take this one, get it matched. Put my tape on my mat. Get this one down. And now that we have all of our main mats down, I am just going to use my big old spatula to go over these to get them stuck. So now I am going to bring in four mats that measure four and seven eighths by two and three quarters. And we are going to place those down on top of each one of our inside panels. So I am going to take my tape runner again, trying to get it centered. Two more 
more to do. And let's put down our last one. All right, so now that we have those down, we have a very sturdy base to our box. So what we're going to do now is I am going to bring in a piece that measures three by three, and we're going to cut out just a little pocket on the diagonal. So I am placing it in the corner there and the corner here, and then I'll use my finger blade just to cut straight through, just like that. And I am going to take these corners and I am going to place one right there and one right there. So all I'm going to do to place these down is I am going to take my reptile glue, go along the two corner edges and get it stuck. And then I'll take it and I'm going to put it right in the corner of that blue mat. And then I'll get this stuck. I am going to use my handy dandy paper towel to wipe up any excess glue. And then I'll go along that with my big old spatula to make sure it stays stuck. And now I'm going to take this one and do the same thing. So I am going to take my glue and just run my glue as close to the edge as I can. And then I'll take this piece, place it in the corner of the blue piece, and we're gonna get that nice and stuck. And then I'll use my handy dandy paper towel to clean up any excess glue. And I know you guys, and I know that y'all are gonna come up with some fabulous ways to do this. This is just a little guide here, but you can alter it and just come up with all types of wonderful ways to make this your own. So now that we have this down, we're going to go ahead and take two pieces that measure three quarters of an inch by five and a quarter, and we're going to place one here and one on the back side there. So I am going to take my tape runner and just place this down like so. Then I'm going to flip over to this side and do the same thing. So I'm going to take this piece and get it matched So, and so now we have this. So now guys, I am going to bring in some little mats so that we can make tags for the inside here. And so what I'll be using is I have two pieces that measure three and five eighths by two. And these are decorative pieces that match my project main color piece. And then I have four pieces that measure three and five eighths by one and three quarters. So what we're going to do is we are going to take our tape and take our white mats that measure three and three eighths by one and three quarters and I'm placing one on the front. Then I'm going to place one on the back. And this will just give us a nice little area where we can write notes or whatever we might want to put in here. So that one's going to go there. Then I'll bring in my second piece of three and five eighths by two inch matte base. And I'll bring in my first piece of one and three quarters by three and three eighths inch white piece. And we're going to place that down. 
And then I'll flip it over and we're going to take that second piece and do the same thing. So now we have two mats looking pretty sweet. So at this point, the only thing that we have left to do really is to decorate and make the lid. So before we make the lid, I am going to bring in my decorative stickers and I'm just going to do some decorating on this project. So I think that what I want to do is I am going to take this sticker that says warm, cozy, and bright and we're going to place that right there. And then I'll take this one that says just for you and we're going to place it right there. Then I want to place some stickers right in that white space there. So I am going to take this one that says snow much fun and I'm going to place it towards the top this time. And then I'm going to take this one that says, let's stay in. And I am going to place it towards the top, but I want to make sure that I have it nice and straight. Now I can take my tags and put my tags in just like that. But before I do, I am going to add just a little something to my tag. And I think, that might be too big. So I am going to find myself just a little sticker. This one says snow fun. And I'll place that there. Then I'm going to take my other tag and I am going to find, I'll use this one that says, let it snow and we're going to place it right there. So now I can take that and I can tuck those in just like that. Then I want to place something decorative right along the bottom. It doesn't have to be a whole lot of anything and I think what I'm going to go with, I am loving these Christmas trees. So I'm going to take one and place it right there. And then I am going to take this one and place it right there. That's just giving me a cohesive look across my whole project. So now what I want to do guys is I want to find something that I am going to put right here. So I think what I'm liking. So I think I'm going to go with this one that says, let it snow. And I'm just gonna turn it just a little bit so that it will fit. And then I'm going to take this one that says sledding party and place it right there. And that is how simple it is just to decorate the inside of our box to make it a gift. So now what I'm going to do, this is how I'm going to put the lid on when I put it on. This will be my front. So I want to find just something cute to put on the front. And I think what I'm going to put on the front is just going to be that little snowman right there. And I moved him down just a little bit because the lid will be up here. So then I'm going to come around to the back piece and we're going to place something right there as well. And the snowman is still calling to me guys, but this time I'm going to take the more rustic one and just place him down. So now we have the base of our box all done. And this is how it will set out once the original gift has been removed and the box becomes the second gift. Isn't that super sweet? So I'm going to set it to the side and we are going to make our lids. 
Now to make our lids, I am starting with two pieces that measure seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And I'm going to give you guys an alternative measurement in case you want your lid to be looser than the one I'm making. I'm making my lid to be very snug. That's why I'm using a seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter um, inch piece to make those lids. If you want a looser lid, just slightly looser, cut your paper at seven and three eighths by seven and three eighths and do exactly what I'm doing here. Score at one and two. It's all in how tight you want your lid and I'll show you the difference in just a minute, but I'm going to go ahead and score both of my papers at one and at two. And these are seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Here is a lid that I made when I cut my paper to seven and three eighths by seven and three eighths and scored it at one and two. And it does fit my box, but it's a little bit looser than I want. I wanted my lid on this to be very snug. I would be fine with this on any other project, but I don't want the base to be loose. So I went with a very snug lid and I started with the piece that measures seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter and scored at one and two on all four sides. So now all we need to do is fold and burnish all of our scores. And then once we have all of our scores folded and burnished, we're going to have three corner pieces that we need to get rid of. So we are going to go up to the second score mark on both sides of the wider panel and cut straight down so that we can free up this wide panel here. Then we can go ahead and angle in here, angle in here, go to this score mark here, angle in, and then we can come to this score mark and remove pieces one and two, and then we can remove piece number three. That's all that we're doing. So we'll come over to this side. We are going to go to this score mark here because we're working on freeing up that wide panel, and we'll go up to that second score mark and drag straight down. And then we'll come over to this score mark, drag straight down, and we have freed up that panel. Then we'll angle here, angle here, go to this score mark here, angle in, and then we can cut it to remove pieces one and two. Then we'll cut through and re remove piece number three and we'll do the same thing over here. And then what I want to do is I want to make sure that all of my flaps, the outer flaps, have a slight angle to them. So I am just going to take my finger blade and go to each one that does not have an angle and just angle because that'll just make it easier to fold in when we place that glue. All right guys, so now that we have our lid all cut out, I am going to go ahead and glue it together. So we're going to take our glue, place our glue on the glue flaps, and then we'll join the corners together, making sure that we have nice, crisp corners. So I am going to use my bone folder to go on the inside and just smooth that down. Then I'll do the same thing over here. Match it corner to corner, nice and smooth. We've got that stuck. 
And then I'll do the same thing here. So I am going to place my glue on my tabs and then we will get these stuck together. Use my bone folder to go on the inside, get that nice and stuck and even in the corner. I don't want any overhang. So I'll come to this side and do the same thing. So now I'm going to fold my outer pieces backwards and then I'll take my glue and we're just going to put a little bit of glue on these outer pieces and then we'll fold the outer pieces in just like this. Then we can use our bone folder and just go inside and get them all stuck. And then just make sure that you go around it a few times on the inside just to make sure you have a really good stick on those inside flaps. And we have two pieces that we're going to put on the lids that measure three by three. And I am just going to take some tape. Oops. And then I can take this and get it positioned in the center. All right guys, so now that our lid is done, I actually went ahead and did the second one off camera. We're going to go ahead and put our box together. So the way that we do it is this flap, we're going to have it on the outside because it'll help to keep the box squared. Then we're going to take our lid, just place your lid on, and then you can turn it upside down and place your base. And so now that we have our lids on, we're going to have a very beautiful box gift to give. The last thing that I am going to do to mine, very simple, I am just going to add this beautiful Anna Griffin bow. And if you're interested in these bows, AnnaGriffin.com, you can find plenty of beautiful, beautiful classic embellishments on her website. So now that we have this box all done, isn't it beautiful? I absolutely love it. And again, when we take off the top, we take off the bottom, our box becomes a gift. Perfect. And remember the two different lid size measurements that I gave you in case one lid is a little bit snugger than you want or looser than you want. Just kind of play around with it. But here we have a most gorgeous, gorgeous gift. And I am going to bring my first one back into frame so that you can see how our box looks when it's closed. This is how it looks when it's open and the box becomes a gift. But when it's closed, you can actually take items and put them down on the inside and use this as a way that you would give a gift. And then, like I said, once the gift has been removed, we just take off the top and the bottom and our box becomes a beautiful, beautiful standalone gift all by itself. So guys, I hope that you have liked this project. And if you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join my online crafting family. You guys, be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.